and, and the fear uh, against tyranny, right, is something that you mentioned. You wrote an article a few years back entitled The Politics of Constitutional Meltdown, where you had essentially implied that at times of war, internal or external, as you wrote, the Constitution, and I presume you meant rights more broadly, uh, are what you called collateral damage, right? It's funny here in the States, we talk a whole lot about free speech in that way, that at times of war, fear, uncertainty, the government has wider latitude to shut folks up and violate the precedent, right, that flows from the First Amendment. How big of a fear is that? Do you mean how big of a fear is it in relation to free speech? Or how big of a fear is the erosion of rights when you have constitutional meltdown? Oh. Which one? Both. Okay. Well, let me take the erosion of rights in terms of constitutional meltdown. Um, the article was prompted, the, art, the paper is going to appear in an edited book by Mark Tushnet and Dmitry Kochanov, uh, which is going to be called The Politics of Constitutional Law. And I was asked to write a chapter on the politics of constitutional meltdown. Um, and uh, it was a very interesting chapter to write because, as you would be aware from having looked at the chapter, the principal focus of the chapter is on developments in Europe, uh, in certain countries in Europe, but also elsewhere, um, startlingly so. But in Europe, it's exemplified by the situation in Poland and the situation in Hungary, in particular to lesser extent in Romania. But there are, there are other countries which are problematic, such as Turkey uh, and the like. And the problem here is that what you get, and there's a very sophisticated literature on this, which I draw on, um, where you get what's known in the jargon of the trade as democratic backsliding. And put more specifically, what's so particularly insidious in this respect is that you will get a government elected on a normal franchise, which then uses constitutional mechanisms to alter the constitutional ordering in its favor and to stack the cards in its favor so as to make it much more difficult for it to be unseated in the future. And one of the things which directly impacts on law and rights is that one of the techniques which these courts use which these regimes use, is to undermine the rule of law by undermining the independence of judges. So what are, one of the things we've seen um, uh, alarmingly, both in Hungary and in Poland, are concerted efforts by the regimes in those countries to literally change the personnel in certain of their key courts such as their constitutional court, and replace the standard bearers of rule of law and judicial independence, the ordinary judiciary, with state-picked appointees who are willing to do the bidding of the state in those circumstances. And that's led to alarming judgments by the Polish constitutional court and the Hungarian equivalent. Um, so the uh, democratic backsliding and the attack on judicial independence places rights more generally in jeopardy, including the right to free speech, but not only the right to free speech. It places rights in jeopardy in circumstances where um, the default position should be that if you have a functioning, a properly functioning democracy, there are the normal constraints imposed by a constitution on what the government can do. And that if there is doubt about whether the government has kept within its remit, the individual can go to court and get an honest, objective adjudication about whether the government 
has infringed rights-based guarantees contained in the Constitution. And in a number of these countries, um, that is increasingly more difficult to do because of the inroads into judicial independence which have occurred in these countries. Um, so, uh, um, but then you, what you, moving on to your the second dimension, the dimension more specifically about free speech, what you tend to see, uh, and again, it's a really sophisticated literature in this area, what you see is the bad guys learning from the bad guys. In other words, the, the, the regimes which are likely to engage in constitutional backsliding are smart. They, they have advisors who say, look, hey, country X use this technique. Let's take, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's take uh, something out of the playbook of country X and use it in our own country. Um, and one of the uh, standard things which have been used in these circumstances is when very harsh limits are placed on free speech because free speech is the lifeblood of democracy and it's the lifeblood of critique of the existing government. And so you see, whether it's in Putin's Russia or Erdogan's Turkey, and the, and the limit on free speech is not necessarily a direct limit. Quite often when the form it takes is offences which in a sense, say you can speak freely, except when you commit an offence, and then you define an offence very, very broadly, which is basically what happens in these countries. <laughs>